Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about imaginary and complex numbers. So the number one thing, imaginary sounds really hard, but all we really need to know is that the square root of negative one, we would rewrite that as I, because you guys at this point, usually in your math career, have it trained into you that you can't take the square root of a negative number, okay? And then you get to a point in your math career when you learn, oh, you actually can, it's just an imaginary number, okay? So we just would never write a negative number underneath a square root. We would just instead write a single I pulling that negative one out. So I promise this makes more sense once we actually see it in action. Let's look at some examples. So look at this one, square root of negative 64, okay? Now, a lot of times teachers will teach their students in younger grades that, oh, we can't do that, that's, you know, no solution or, or whatever. Um, but what we're doing is actually saying, yes, we can simplify this, we just have to be careful about it. So what I wanna do is separate the negative and the 64. So let's do that by first writing our square root of 64 times square root of negative one. So see how I separated the negative, negative one, and the 64 out in two. So now I just reduce and I say, okay, what's the square root of 64? Well, you may need a calculator to help you or you may just know the square root of 64 is eight. So this reduces to eight and then I've got times the square root of negative one. Well, remember we said square root of negative one is I. So eight times I, that's your answer. So over here, notice we've got square root of negative 81. Okay, well let's separate the negative and the 81 away from each other. So let's do the 81 first, square root of 81 times square root of, and then we'll cover that negative one. Well, what's the square root of 81? Hopefully you're thinking nine. Now, in a lot of my other videos, I've really pushed how we have to, anytime we take the square root of a number, we would say plus, so in this case, square root of 81, that we would say plus or minus nine. The reason why we're not doing that here is because we're not solving anything. All I need to put is nine, and then the square root of negative one, remember, square root of negative one is just i, so nine times i. Let's keep going. Here we've got square root of negative seven. So let's separate, let's like draw a line between. We've got negative, or square root of seven times square root of negative one. Now square root of seven is not a perfect square, right? If I were to put it in my calculator, I would get square root of seven, I get a long decimal, okay? So that tells me I would need to simplify this radical. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say simplify the radical, you definitely need to stop and check out my videos on simplifying radicals because from where we move from here, it will not make any sense unless you've seen and understood that video. So go ahead and stop here, check out that one before you go any further. Seven, I can't simplify it anymore. The only factors I can pull out of seven are seven and one, which means Square root of seven is as simplified as it gets. But negative one, I can simplify to i. So the way we would write this is i times square root of seven. Okay, now you may be wondering, well, why did you put the square root of seven behind the i this time? Well, what goes out in front is always what you're able to bring out of the radical. Okay, so here and here, I was able to bring both the nine and the i out of the radical. And notice how I didn't have a radical a square root in my answer. Here, you always wanna write the i in front of 
a radical if you still have a radical. Let's look at this one. I've got square root of negative 48. Okay, well, let's first separate the 48 from the negative. Let's spread these out. So I've got square root of 48 times square root of the negative, negative 1. Now, negative 1, I know that's going to reduce to i. But 48, hmm, it's not a perfect square. I could try it, square root of 48. And see, it's not a perfect square, but let, could we simplify it? Could I do 48 and break it down further? So when I think 48, I immediately think of 6 and 8 right? It's not the only two factors you can use. You can use any, any whole factors. All right, so let's see. 6 would break down to 3 and 2. 8 would break down to 2 and 4. And then 4 would break down to 2 and 2. Remember, I'm looking for pairs, sets of 2. So let's see. I've got a set of 2s right there. And then I have a set of 2s here. So there's one two that gets to come out. And then here's another two that gets to come out. And then the three, notice he doesn't have a partner. So he's stuck underneath the radical. And then we still have this times negative one, which we know means I. So let's go ahead and clean this up because I wouldn't want to leave this as an answer. I want to simplify it all the way and really clean it up. So at this point on the outside of the radical, I've got two times two, which is four. I also have this I that's no longer underneath the radical. So he'll come out with the four. And then I have lastly the radical, the square root of three. So this is four times i times the square root of three. Let's look at one more. So this one looks a little different because notice I've got negative two already on the outside and that's okay. That just means kind of like how I had these two numbers on the outside. It's just saying, hey, you already have something there. So make sure when we do this process, we combine it with the negative two already out there through multiplication. So first, let's just start with this negative 80, square root of negative 80. Well, at this point, I've got negative two times, the one that was already out there, times square root of 80 times square root of negative one. Okay, remember, we want to separate the negative one and the 80. Negative two, nothing I can do with right now. Square root of 80, can I break that down further? I definitely think so, let's try. Let's see, so what are two factors that go into 80? Well, I immediately think eight and 10. And eight, I know, becomes two and four, and then four becomes two and two. 10 becomes two and five. Okay, so I'm looking for sets of two. So here's one set. Right now, it doesn't have to actually be the number two, good reminder. It just means a set of two pairs. So here, here's one two that gets to come out and join the negative two already out there. Here's another two that gets to come out. And then the five, he doesn't have a partner, so he has to stay underneath the radical. And all this times, what do we know square root of negative one is? Well, we know that's i, so times I. Now let's clean this up a little bit. What is negative 2 times 2 times 2? And if you're not sure, bring out your calculator, right? Negative 2 times 2 times 2. And we get negative 8. So I have a negative 8 on the outside, right? And then I have this I that has also been brought out of a radical. And then I have this times square root of five that's trapped underneath. Now it's perfectly okay that this eight is negative. You just don't wanna have a negative underneath the radical in your final answer. One other thing I wanna talk about is complex numbers. So a complex number is a number that has both a real number and an imaginary number. So looking at this, so kind of like this expression here, square root of negative 18 plus four. Let's simplify this. 
And then let's look and our answer will be a complex number. So um, if we've got a negative square root of 18, or, sorry, I said that wrong. If we've got a square of, <laughs> said that wrong again. If we've got a square root of negative 18, right, um, we definitely need to simplify this because we need to pull out that negative. So at this point, remember we separate them. We say negative 18 times square root of negative one plus four, right? So let's reduce this. So 18, can we break that down further? Can I simplify that radical? Well, let's see. I'm gonna try it. So 18, I immediately think of nine and two as my two factors. You could use three and six. Um, you would get the same answer when you break it all the way down. So for nine, I know I've got three and three. Remember, I'm looking for sets of two. So here's a pair, a set of two right there. This two has no partner, so he gets a box. Remember, that means he stays underneath the radical. So at this point, I've got three on the outside of the radical, right? That was the three that gets to come out. I've got this negative one, so I know that's gonna become an I, right? So three I. And then I have what's left underneath the radical, which is square root of two, right? And these are all tied together. And then I have a plus four, okay? Now, it's important to know I could write it this way, right? I could also write it four plus three I square root of two, okay? Either one of these is okay. I honestly typically write it this way, um, but either one of these would be totally acceptable, okay? Let's look at one more example. So for this one, I want to um, simplify what I can. So I've got square root of 25 plus five times the square root of negative seven. Okay, well square root of 25, hopefully that's immediately drawing your attention that square root of 25 is a perfect square. And you can test it. Square root of 25 is, oops, I did 35. Square root of 25 is five. Okay, so let's go ahead and reduce that, right? Square root of 25 is five. And then we've got our plus five square root of negative seven. So this negative seven, I would definitely want to break it down further. I want to separate it. So I've got five plus five times square root of seven times square root of the negative one hanging out. So probably the biggest student error I see at this point that I do want to point out is a lot of students say, oh, okay, five plus five, that's 10. Those are like terms. You've got to be really careful here because we cannot just separate the five from this times square root of seven times square root of negative one. These three are tied together through multiplication. What I would want to do is go ahead and simplify this to my I, bring it out with the five that's already out there, and then let me think, could I simplify the seven? Let's go ahead and rewrite before we're sure. So I've got five plus five times i, remember that i is that negative one that's coming out, times square root of seven. Can I break the square root of seven down? No, that is simplified as low as it goes. The only factors I could pull out of seven would be seven and one. So that doesn't help me simplify a radical. So I could write it like this, or you might write the plus five at the back. I typically write it this way. So now I want you guys to try one on your own. So I want you to just simplify the square root of negative 60. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.